Hello everyone. Please bear with the voiceover in this video which I had to do because of the background noise of beeping machines and crying babies. Here I am saying that before you start your neonatal examination you need to introduce yourself to the parents take their introduction as well explain what you are going to do and take their consent wash your hands properly with soap and water if it is visibly soiled or use a sanitizer ensure there is appropriate lighting in the room and appropriate temperature at any point during your examination if you find something which needs immediate intervention then you have to stop your examination and intervene or inform your seniors now we get multiple opportunities to examine a neonate like a brief examination within first few minutes of birth a more detailed examination within first 48 hours and an examination before discharge to see fitness for discharge priorities would vary at different times here i will discuss the usual comprehensive examination that we do in an otherwise stable neonate a lot of findings could be noted just by a keen observation of the neonate the order of examination may vary between different examiners in general you have to examine the neonate or for that matter any patient under six major subheadings the first is general appearance second is the vital signs third is anthropometry fourth is the basic general examination which includes palate ictus sinuses in this case next fifth is head to toe examination and the sixth point is a systemic examination of four major systems that is central nervous system respiratory system cardiovascular system abdominal examination and sometimes a fifth system that is musculoskeletal system where it is indicated as i already mentioned the order of examination may vary in different examiners or according to the problems of the baby it is wise to note all those points under these subheadings first which can be done without disturbing the baby this comes with practice now coming to the general appearance look if the neonate is looking sick or not if he is active how is he responding to light touch if he is crying whether the cry is consolable or not and the type of cry then comes the assessment of vital signs we have four major vital signs to check first is temperature then comes heart rate respiratory rate and capillary refill time blood pressure is not routinely checked in an otherwise healthy neonate here i am counting the respiratory rate first for a full 1 minute now i am checking the temperature first check the temp temperature with the dorsum of your hand on the center and then at the periphery the temperature of center and periphery both should be warm and same the fifth vital sign is spo2 which you can check using a pulse oximeter now i am checking the heart rate of the baby you can count for 6 seconds and then multiply it with 10 Now I'm going to check the capillary refill time in this neonate by pressing the neonate on her sternum for 5 seconds and then releasing it. Now coming to the next subheading which is anthropometry. We have to check the weight, length and head circumference in all the neonates. Since I have done anthropometric examination in this neonate, I am not repeating it here. Then comes the next subheading that is checking for the pallor, ictus and sinuses. You can also do this in the head to toe examination, but I keep it as a separate subheading so that I never miss it. Presence or absence of pallor can be assessed by general color of the neonate or color of the palms and soles. Newborns in general should have a reddish hue. Now I'm going to check for the ictus in this neonate. I have made a separate video of how to examine ictus in a neonate. You can watch that. Jaundice in a neonate progresses in a cephalocaudal manner. 
Now I am going to look for the cyanosis. Acrocyanosis can be normal in a neonate. Acrocyanosis means peripheral cyanosis. Now I am checking for any central cyanosis in the oral cavity and lips. Cyanosis is absent in this neonate. Now comes the turn of a detailed head to toe examination. Here my objective is to rule out any kind of birth injury, to rule out any kind of congenital malformation and to look for the gestation also. Coming to the examination of the head. Look at the scalp for any cut abrasions of birth injury. Feel for any kind of swelling like caput, sepal hematoma or subgallial hemorrhage. Then feel for the fontanel that is here the anterior fontanel we are going to feel. It's better to do it in a sitting position. Look whether it is soft or bulging. You also should palpate the skull bones and check for molding. Next comes the examination of the face. Look at the symmetry. Look at if the faces are looking abnormal. Next comes the examination of the ear. Here you have to look at the pinna size and shape. See whether the auditory canal is present or not. Look for any preauricular sinus, pits or skin tags. Next look for the low set ears. For that just draw a line horizontally joining the inner canthi and extend it downwards. In low set ears, the helix will be below this line. Next comes the examination of the eyes. In the eyes, you have to look for any subconjunctival hemorrhage. Check for the color of the iris. Look whether any iris coloboma is present or not. Look at the movement of the extraocular muscles. Look at the pupillary size and reaction. Definitely check for a red reflex to rule out cataract. Look at the palpebral fissure, what kind of slant it is. Next comes the examination of the nose. Look for any deformity and check for the patency of nares. For ruling out coronal atresia, either you can pass a nasogastric tube through each nostril or you can keep a clean glass near the nostrils and check for mist formation. Next comes the examination of the mouth. Here you have to look for any Epstein pearls. Look for cleft palate, natal teeth and tongue tie. I am taking the same opportunity of examining the oral cavity to examine the sucking reflex as well which actually comes under the neurological examination. Also look at the jaw if any micronathia or retronathia is present. Now I am examining the neck for any kind of swelling. Next comes the examination of the thorax. Palpate the clavicles. Look at the symmetry of the thorax. Look for any accessory nipples and examine the breast bud, which is important for checking the gestation. Now examine the abdomen. Look carefully for any asymmetry which can indicate an underlying mass. Look for any diastasis rectus abdominis. Look for any abdominal wall defect. Check the umbilical stump if it is present. Look at the veins and arteries in the umbilical stump. Here I am examining the umbilicus for any discharge, order, periumbilical erythema or swelling. Then also look for any umbilical hernia if it is present or not. Next you have to examine the genitalia. In a female you have to examine the labia majora and minora. Look for any hymenal tag, imperforate hymen any kind of clitoral enlargement. In a male, you will have to check the penile length, if hypospadiasis is present, check for the scrotum, if hydrocele is present and also palpate the testis in a male neonate. Now I am going to examine the anal opening, check for the patency, its position and size. Now you have to examine the back of the neonate, especially the lower back and sacral area. Look for any neural tube defect, any kind of swelling, any pylonidal sinus tract, presence of any sacral dimple or any tuft of hair. Here you can see a Mongolian spot is present. Now you have to examine the skin. Look for any drying, cracking, presence of any milia, any erythema toxicum. Look for any salmon patch, any transient pustular melanosis, Mongolian patch which we already saw in the back. Then. 
look at the extremities check for any anomaly of the digit like polydactyly syndactyly or clinodactyly look at the palmar crease look whether club foot is present or not now i'm going to start with the systemic examination now i'm going to do the nervous system examination of the newborn you can do it under four subheadings first is the assessment of behavioral state of the neonate then comes the assessment of the autonomic nervous system then examination of the motor system and then newborn's responsiveness to the outside world now in behavioral state there are six behavioral state in the neonate deep sleep light sleep drowsiness quiet alert active alert or crying so note what state he is in right now if the baby is crying note the type of cry you can assess the autonomic nervous system by checking the vital signs by looking at the color of the baby if it is pink or mottled or if there is excessive jitteriness or not then comes the evaluation of the motor system now in motor system you have to look at the posture of the baby then note the spontaneous movements of the upper limb and lower limb look at the symmetry of face while the baby is crying then check the tone of the baby by lifting the baby like this and noting the movement of the head you can check the tone of the lower limb by checking the popliteal angle when it is required you may need to do the scarf sign or ventral suspension in order to check the tone next you have to check for the primitive reflexes do a morose reflex which we should do at last because it would lead to crying and then here check the rooting reflex then sucking reflex should also be checked by putting a clean finger in the mouth which i have already done now i have started the examination of the cardiovascular system count the heart rate for 6 seconds and then multiply it by 10 look for any abnormal rhythm ejection click any kind of heart murmur and always remember to palpate the femoral pulse now i am going to do the respiratory system examination majority of neonatal respiratory examination can be performed visually without the use of stethoscope you have to look at the signs of labored breathing look for any intercostal retraction subcostal retraction or grunting then use your stethoscope to look for any asymmetry of breath sounds or any adventitious sounds now i am going to do the parabdominal examination here you have to look for any visible bowel loops look for any asymmetry on the abdomen now palpate for liver and spleen gently like this then you should check whether the kidneys are palatable or not and finally you should also hear for the bowel sounds now i am going to check the hip joint of the baby by doing an ortholinies test which reduces the dislocated hip joint here you have to gently abduct the infant's thigh using the thumb while placing the anterior pressure on the greater trochanter using your index and forefinger the barlow's test is not recommended anymore because it led to over treatment so i hope you found it useful thank you